Welcome to part two of expansion slot types. And we will just dive right in exactly where we left off in part one. And we ended part one talking about the PCI extended expansion slots. And so now let's jump to PCIe. Now PCIe is PCI Express, and this is the latest, fastest, and most popular choice today. Still called PCI, but it operates much differently. As a matter of fact, it's a serial type operation with dedicated wires for each direction out to the various motherboard parts and then a separate wire for coming back. Don't worry about that right now. Here's what you need to know for the exam. PCI Express is the latest, fastest, and most popular. Theoretically, it can provide data speeds up to 320 gigabits per second. Now, generally, what we're normally seeing out of functionality is out there somewhere around 5 gigabits, but that is plenty fast for the technologies we're using. But that is so drastically faster than the other technologies we've seen, it's pretty astounding. Now, usually, if you see a PCI Express slot out there, usually black in color or very dark in color. Not always, but it's there. It transfers data over data lanes, and you have much like a lane on our, like a two-lane road, you have one going and one coming, all right? Now, a one-lane version is called a times one or a PCI Express one or a PCI Express by one. Then there's by 2, by 4, by 8, by 16, by 32. And when you think of these, think of a road, a freeway, a one-lane road, a two-lane, a four-lane, an eight-lane, a 16-lane, a 32-lane. Now, obviously, the 32 lane is going to let you move the most amount of data the fastest, but just exactly like the construction on the freeway, a 32 lane is going to run you a little more, all right? The higher the version, the bigger the slot. Notice. A one by, and notice the size, and then you look at a four, and then an eight, and a 16. They just keep getting longer and longer and longer. And as a result, the cards are longer, there's more pins, there's more lanes. And so you can tell by the relative size of these roughly what you're looking at when you're looking at a PCI Express slot. Now let's talk about the mini PCI. These are PCI cards and slots for laptops. The cool thing about these is they lie flat, which allows us to make our laptops thinner and easier and lighter to carry around. They require a lot lower power than the PCI cards that we see for our desktops and our servers. But the mini PCIs don't have any external connections. Now we're used to plugging in network cables and graphics cables, display cables into uh, various expansion cards in standard PCs. But on the laptops that mini PCI doesn't offer any external communications or connections. They use it for things like Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, those sorts of things. Now, this is what it looks like. Now, notice you're looking at a motherboard from a laptop or something here. And notice this is the actual mini PCI slot. And you see they've inserted a mini PCI card into that slot. But notice it is parallel to the motherboard. It doesn't stand up perpendicular to the motherboard like desktops do. And so this is a great space saver. Now, I just want to mention this one. I'm going to put it all up here so you can see it. CNR was a communications and networking riser. I don't think you'll see this on the exam, but they mention it on the objective. So I just want to tell you this much about it. We no longer use it. It was a separate little slot that started showing up on some motherboards. It provided audio and ethernet support. It was dedicated to that. but Ethernet and audio started getting integrated into the motherboard, and that has rendered this whole CNR or communications and networking riser obsolete. And so you're not seeing it very much at all, if any, anymore on the new motherboard. So if you see CNR, it's a communications and networking riser. It's now obsolete. So you could see that on the exam. Now, let's talk about the granddaddy here, AGP. AGP stands for Accelerated Graphics Port. This is the video only version of PCI. It has a direct connection to the CPU. It can walk straight into the president's office, if you will. It operates at 32 bits at 66 megahertz with all kinds of other modes. Two times runs at 133, four times runs at 266, eight times runs at 533, and it just keeps going. 
This is generally what the slot looks like and what the card plug-in looks like. That's not the entire card. But notice, AGP simply says, okay, this is a PCI type slot, but it is totally dedicated to the display, to graphics. Now notice what's happened. When Windows first came out, it was a total different way for the standard Windows operating system and the IBM based PCs and clones to work with. And Windows threw graphics at the computer that quite honestly, it just wasn't designed to provide. And this became a problem. And so video quickly moved to the expansion slots. Well, now we're supporting very high definitions on our monitors. Our monitors are getting huge. There's a lot of scaling going on. And so AGP takes care of that. AGP is very, very fast. It's dedicated. It's hardwired, all that sort of stuff. Now, that's the expansion slot types. In part one and part two, you need to know. Just generally learn the shapes of the slots. You can go out there and Google some things, practice recognizing these things on a motherboard. You're not going to see a tremendous amount of questions about these, but you may see two or three. So just know the different types, know the different characteristics of them, and you'll be just fine on the exam. So that's a quick look in two parts at expansion slot types.